Today we'll be building this dungeon library, complete with books, shelves, scrolls, and more. How are you today? Art Jeremiah here, and I'm back with another Building a Dungeon video. If you want regular tabletop crafting inspiration, then subscribe to the channel. And now let's get into that dungeon build. To make the bookshelves, I first used my hobby knife to rough up the edges of a handful of craft sticks. I then used the serrated part of a cheap knife to give the wood some extra grain. Take note of how I slide the serrations across the wood rather than in a cutting motion. I then mix a stain for the wood. I wanted to have that old wood look, so as I did in the workshop room of this dungeon, I mix water, flow improver, burnt umber ink, and blue ink together and brush it onto all my wooden pieces. While those are drying, I cut out some rectangular pieces of chipboard. These particular shelves will be one inch wide and an inch and a half tall, and these rectangles will be the backing of our library shelves. I paint this backing with burnt umber craft paint by Apple Barrel. I cut the craft sticks into one and a half and one inch lengths, then super glue them to the chipboard backing. I did need to cut some of the boards slightly smaller in order to fit the boards in place right. I had a bunch of thin strips of foam that I cut into small rectangles. These will represent books. I then mix black paint, white PVA glue, and water into a cup and mix my books into the liquid mixture. When I'm satisfied with this black undercoat, I carefully place these books randomly on the shelves. This takes care of both the gluing part and the undercoating part in a relatively quick manner. And now I take a scrap piece of paper and cut out and roll little pieces of paper I then mix glue, water, and a drop of raw sienna ink together. Then dip each scroll into the mix and place them on the shelves. I also cut a couple squares of paper towel and use this mixture to place them as well. This just represents some fabric or something that's sitting on the shelves. I don't really know, I just thought I'd add a little bit more visual interest than just the books and the scrolls. And then I go on to paint the books on the bookshelf with various shades of tan and brown. And I'm using my favorite brush here. This is a size 1 Winsor & Newton Series 7 Kalinsky Sable Paintbrush. If you've had issues with brushes bending at the tip or anything like that, these brushes actually hold up really well to that. They tend to be a little bit higher in price. Regardless, I think that you save money by not buying so many paintbrushes. That said, I wouldn't use it for things like dry brushing and things like that. Just picking out details. I mean, dry brushing will ruin any brush, so make sure you're just using old brushes for that. The next thing I did was build the basic dungeon room, and I'm not going to repeat this step in this video. You can go back and see how I built the workshop room of this dungeon, and I go into detail about how I built this sort of tile. After my black undercoat has dried, I do an overbrush of my dark gray color. This is some acrylic paint I got from Hobby Lobby, and it actually ended up not being that good. And I'm using it in this dungeon, just so the whole dungeon matches, but I definitely would not recommend. Um, I'd say if you're gonna do this, use Pewter Gray by Apple Barrel, and it would work a lot better. It's a lot more opaque, you don't have to do as much brushing, and I like that. I then do a highlight of antique white to the tile and to the bookshelves. This step is just to pick out a few more easy details. After that, I got to thinking what I was going to do with the leftover piece of stained wood that I had, and I decided to break it up and make a little rubble pile in this room. Like maybe it was a broken shelf or a broken table or something. Just something for the characters to look at and inspect, as well as add some extra character to the room. I actually just kind of sporadically did this in the middle of doing the highlighting with a dry brush, so it was easy enough to just highlight all these pieces of wood real quick. I then decided that I wanted to add a little bit more detail to the books by adding a metallic brass band to about two thirds of the books. I just wanted to add a little bit more detail for those people who wanted to look closer at the bookshelves. The exact paint I'm using here is Vallejo Brass. And just a note, I'm going to have some Amazon links down in the description of some of the supplies that I've used in this build. Or if it's not the exact supplies I've used in this build, I found some that are fairly close and brands that I trust so that it's easy for you to just go and order and not have to look around all of Amazon. 
I then glue down all the bookshelves with white PVA glue. I add glue ball to the backing and to the bottom of the shelves. That way they will be securely in place. I also glue my wood debris into a small pile where I feel like there could be more visual interest. Also in a place where I think it might be a little bit of an obstacle for the players. I then do a controlled black wash over all the stone in some of the areas of the bookshelves and the rubble pile. I don't cover the bookshelves in rubble pile. I mostly use it to pick out some extra detail in the wood grain and also to bring out some of the more shadowy areas. This particular wash consists of water, black ink, flow improver, and glazing medium. And don't forget I'll try to have Amazon links in the description below so that you can make your own. And after all that dried, I decided I didn't quite have as much detail as I wanted in this build. So I decided to add some books and more scrolls to the room randomly, like it's some sort of debris, as well as some pieces of rock, just to give it that more dungeony appearance. And the books that I'm going to be making here are going to be a little bit more detailed than the books before. I'm actually going to have some pages sliced into the foam. Originally, I was going to cut out a piece of foam and then wrap some paper around that to re represent like a book cover, but I decided decided to try something else and just slice the pages into the foam and as you can see it works pretty good that way. These really ended up looking like books and I'm definitely going to use this again. And the pages were pretty much the same as the pages on the shelves but this time for some reason I decided to do it different and paint them black first and then paint them cream and then add the raw sienna wash. Regardless they ended up with a similar look. Me painting the scrolls black had something to do with me getting into the workflow of painting all the little details black. The black mixture that I'm using for this is just your run of the mill black paint and Mod Podge mix. And I paint it on the books, the rocks, and the scrolls. And like I said, I probably shouldn't have done it on the scrolls. Should have just soaked that in watered down PVA glue and like I did the other scrolls. But it's okay, it still turned out great. And then after that dries, I paint the scrolls white, I paint the stones gray to match the floor, and I paint all the books in a variety of different browns and tannish colors. And then of course I add the little gold trim to all the books. Now I used antique white to paint the pages of the books. And I coated the pages of the books with the same wash as I did the scrolls. And that's just a mixture of water and raw sienna ink. And of course this room wouldn't be complete without our homemade olive colored dank dungeon effect. And if you don't know what I'm talking about you can go ahead and look in the description and click on the video for the workshop room. And in that video I describe how black and yellow make a nice olive green. And in that video I make a glaze with those two colors mixed that does an amazing job at adding like a dank slimy dungeon feel. And that's what I'm applying right here and I just apply it randomly throughout the room and spots that I think it will look good. There's no particular method I'm going about this. I just wanted to add a good variety to the room. And since I was a little bit messy painting this room, I touch up all the black areas around the top and around the sides of the dungeon room. That way it just makes it look nice and neat and maybe even a little bit professional. If you happen to be getting some value out of this channel, then consider joining me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month, and you'll gain access to extra footage of videos like this one and videos that I've done in the past. That's a really good way to help support this channel. I want to give a huge shout out to Scott Busby for joining the Guild of Mercers over on the Patreon page. So last video I was a little bit time strapped and I forgot to do the highlighted comment. So today you guys get two highlighted comments. And the first highlighted comment is from Nuggets Dungeon Terrain. And he says, Dear Art Jeremiah, you make me want to burn all my terrain and start again. I really love this one. Some ideas here that I and others have tried to achieve, but you nailed it. Thanks a lot Nugget, that really means a lot coming from you. You do an amazing job on all of your dungeon builds as well. If you guys haven't seen Nuggets Dungeon Terrain, then you better go check it out. I will have a link to his channel in the description of this video. The second highlighted comment is from GM Builder, who said, Quality, always impressed with your work. I really appreciate that. Comments like this really do keep me motivated to continue to make videos. And not only that, it brings up my engagement rate, which shows YouTube that I'm serious about making videos, and therefore getting these videos out to more crafters like you and me. And now go ahead and watch one of the two videos on the screen that I've handpicked for you right now.